This is Bustin' Loose in Faith with none other than Apostle Dudley Tebow and Prophetess Lisa Tebow. Welcome, welcome, welcome to a broadcast that brings you word and encouragement for your soul. We want you to remember that you don't have no worries. All you need is faith in God. Bustin' Loose in Faith airs Tuesdays and Fridays at 6 p.m. Central Time. Now, without further ado, let's get into this broadcast. And may God bless you. Praise the Lord, praise the Lord, God is good and worthy to be praised. All praise, all glory, all honor belongs to him this day and forevermore. All oh, precious fathers, we are full of thumb and grace. We come to you humbly all of a that might end today. Just a thank you and a praise to you for who you are, that you are God. And besides thee, there is no other to worship in spirit and in truth. Oh, precious fathers, that we get out of the way that you may have your way here today. Oh, Lord, I thank you to hide a man, Calvary's cross, and not these lips of clay. Use us, Father God, the way that you see fit this day. Now, Father God, as we decrease, I that the Spirit of the Lord in me would just increase here today in Jesus' name. Prepare the people's heart to receive thy word in spirit and in truth. We invite the presence of the Holy Spirit just to come on in like a rushing mighty wind. Lead, guide, direct, and ordain our footsteps. We find up any technical difficulties, anything that would try to hinder the word of God from going forth. And, Father, we'll give you the praise, the glory, and the honor. We dedicate, we, we consecrate this, hallelujah, this time into our hands this day in Jesus' name. Use us, Father God. Let us be your mouthpiece, your hands and feet. Let revelation knowledge flow through us this day and forevermore. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen, amen, and amen. Well, bless God. This is Apostle Dudley T. Bo coming to you today. That name that's above every other name. And that is the name of Jesus. Hallelujah. If you have your Bible, amen, I would like you to open it up to the book of Luke, Luke, the sixth chapter, and we'll be looking at verse 46 through 49. Luke, the sixth chapter, verses 46, 47, 48, and 49. And also, we're going to be looking at uh, 2 Timothy 2 and 19. Hallelujah. God is good, and he's worthy to be praised. All praise, all glory, all honor belongs to him this day and forevermore. We serve an awesome God, y'all. We serve a God that sits high. Look at look. God that knows all by name, the very hairs on our head. And for that, we are grateful. We are thankful this day. Hallelujah. You know, he woke us up this morning. Amen. He sent us on our way. And we are thankful and grateful for that. Amen. In the book of Luke, the sixth chapter, verses 46 through 49. And the word of God reads, And why call ye me Lord, Lord, and do not the thing which I say? Whosoever cometh to me and heareth my saying and doeth them, I will show, I will show you to whom he is like. He is like a man which big build a house and dig it deep and lay the foundation on a rock. And when the flood arose, the strain beat it vigorously upon that house and could not shake it, for it was found on a rock. But he that hear it and do it not is like a man that without a foundation, build a house upon the earth against which the strain was beat vigorously, and immediately it fell, and the ruin of that house was great. Hallelujah. Now we go to Second Timothy, praise the Lord, chapter 2 and verse 19. And the word reads, Nevertheless, the foundation of God standeth sure. Having this seal, the Lord 
nor them that are his. And let everyone that name the name of Christ depart from iniquity. Brothers and sisters in Christ, all those in Radio Land is listening in today. We thank God for a privilege and we consider it an honor to come before you and bring forth his word. One thing about God's word, it has been tested. Heaven and earth shall pass away, but God, God's word will stand forever and ever. Just for the next few minutes, pray with us and for us as we bring forth the word. Today we're going to be talking about who or what is your, found, your spiritual foundation built upon. Who or what is your spiritual foundation built upon? Brothers and sisters in Christ, all those that are listening in and those that will be listening in at a later date, in the business, in the business of life, we may have lost sight of the fact that spiritual living is not an afterthought, an afterthought, a week, a weekend obligation. Rather, our spiritual life becomes the very fabric of our daily living and preference way of being in the world. Who or what is your spiritual foundation? built upon. Our spiritual foundation can help return us to a deeper inner peace and calmness while we determine the source of the potential of frustration that we go through during our time of trial. Yes, the strong spiritual foundation can support you in creating a new vision in order to see what opportunities are ahead rather than hanging on to fear and anxiety about changes and what the future may hold. Your inner peace is your outer foundation. I don't know about y'all, amen, but I need the peace of God that surpasses all understanding. That's why early in the morning, I got to have a little talk with Jesus. I got to get before God and ask him to help me that for this day. In Psalms 94, verse 22, the word of God says, but the Lord is my defense and my God is the rock of my refuge. Yes, Jesus is our sure foundation. There is no other that will stand the storm of life and last for eternity. In the book of Isaiah 28 and 16, the word of God reads, Therefore, thus says the Lord, God, behold, I lay in time for a foundation a stone, a trying stone, a precious cornerstone, a sure foundation. He that believeth shall not make haste. You see, the Lord God of heaven has determined what will constitute a sure foundation. That foundation must be solid, unshakable, perfect. And without flaws, that foundation must be tried, tested, and proven sure. That foundation is the law, Jesus Christ, and his death on the cross, his burial in a borrowed tomb, his resurrection from the dead by his own power, and his absolute rise to the eternal heavens 
where he had sat, where he had sat down at the Father's right hand to signify that he has completed his work in becoming that sure foundation. Again, Jesus, who is Lord of Lords and King of Kings of every believer's life, is the only foundation that will stand against every test, every storm, and every trial in your life, as well as mine, as a believer in Christ. So again, we are talking about who or what is your spiritual foundation built upon. You see, the world has many ideas of what makes a strong foundation. Some people say that it is the education that you gain. Some say that it is a love of and reliance on self. Other claims that it is power. Still others believe in it. It is all about money. But even today in 2019, with the use of the social media, a growing number of people still believe that it is influence and prestige. But I'll stop by and let you know that none of these ideas are foundations that will build a life that will last. You know, Jesus is the real deal. And I'm not talking about Holy Spirit. Jesus, he is the author and finisher of our faith. In the book of Mark, chapter 8, verse 36 and 37, the word of God reads, For what shall it profit a man if he gains the whole world and lose? His soul. Or what shall a man give in exchange for his soul? You see, every one of those foundations that I just mentioned, it will crumble. It will falter. It will disappoint and lead you astray. Only Jesus and the Word of God will stand forever. I said it at the beginning. Heaven and earth shall pass away, but God's word shall stand because it understood the test of time. God looks over his word to perform it. Matter of fact, he on his word above his name. You see, Jesus is the foundation on which the body of Christ is built. He is the word that became flesh. And through him, revelation and truth became possible. When you build your foundation on him, the word Jesus, then your foundation is sure and strong. Salvation Again, it's that free gift given to everyone. But for to find your spiritual foundation in your life with the Word of God is a process that takes place. It don't happen overnight. So without a strong biblical foundation in our lives as believers in Christ. It is possible, excuse me, it is impossible to stand against the spiritual forces and rulers of this world. You see, the devil, he is the prince of the air. Bible says in John 10, 10, he only comes to kill, 
to steal, and to destroy. But Jesus came that we may have life and have it more abundantly. I don't know about you today, but I need the Lord in my life. I need him early in the morning. I need him at noontime. And I need him in the midnight hour. Yes, our faith has to be in God. Our trust has to be in him. Jesus Christ is our set example for us to walk after his followers of his. Believe in me that your faith and life foundation will be tested. Yes, the enemy of our soul, the devil, he goes as a roaring lion, seeking who he made the Bible. Only the believers of Christ who have built a strong spiritual foundation on Christ will be able to resist the devil's influence and stand firmly on the word of God. During a spiritual stormy season, yes, God is good and he's worthy to be praised. Again, my brothers and sisters in Christ, all those that are listening today, we are talking about who or what is your spiritual foundation built upon. Only you know and God knows. When we're talking about a foundation, building a solid foundation, spiritually, Building for eternity. You see, an architect knows that a solid foundation is essential to any building, no matter how small or large. Because once the foundation is laid, then the supports are put in, permitting the rest of the structure to be built. Here, Again, in Luke chapter 6, verse 47 and 49, it says, Whosoever cometh to me, talking about Jesus, and hear my saying, and do it now, I will show you to whom he is like. Jesus gave the analogy, the parable right here. He was a great storyteller. He is saying, he is like a man which built a house and dig it deep and laid a foundation on a rock. Something solid. Something that will stand the test of time. The foundation was laid on a rock. And it says, when the flood arose, the strain beat vehemently upon that house and could not shake it. Why? For it was founded upon a rock. You see, the rock was solid. The rock didn't have no crack in it. The rock would stand the weight. The rock is Christ Jesus. But he that hear it and do it not is like a man that without a foundation build a house upon the earth against which the strain did be vigilantly, and immediately it fell. And the ruin of that house was great. 
what? Or who? It's your spiritual foundation built upon. We may look at it even as a natural. I said it earlier. When you get the plan from the architect, they steal it. They are problem solvers. They do research. Calculate the weight. Calculate the width, the depth, the length on how much strain will be placed on the foundation. When we look at life itself as people of God, we go through trials and tribulations. The Bible says all that will live God in Christ Jesus will suffer persecution. Time is the test that will demonstrate what type of character what we are made of. So as followers of Christ, your spiritual foundation is very vital to your life, both here on earth and in eternity. You see, following God and submitting to his wisdom enables you to build a solid, strong foundation based on God's values and his word. As you base your life on him, there are areas you will need to continuously focus on in order to cultivate a strong, healthy, spiritual life. One of the key areas is building a solid foundation spiritually in the area of faith. See, the Bible says in Hebrew 11 and 1, that now feed any of the substance of things hoped for, the evidence of things not seen. Those all up for this said in Hebrew 11 and 6, but without faith, it is impossible to please God. But then they come to God and believe that he is who he say he is, and he is a reward of them that diligently they seek him. Yes, we must seek the Lord with all our whole heart, man, body, and soul. Yes, we serve an awesome God. We serve a God that's as high and above. God that neither slumber nor sleep. God of Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob, the great I am. The one that has all power in his hand. Here in the book of Proverbs, Chapter 3, verse 5 and 6. We must put our trust in God. Here it says, trust in the Lord with all thy heart and lean not unto thy own understanding. In all thy ways acknowledge him and he shall direct thy path. Yes, let your father, let your relationship with Christ grow continuously and daily. Have a little talk with Jesus on a daily basis. Go in your secret closet. Talk to Jesus about it. Talk to God. You see, Jesus, God, and the Holy Spirit, they all agree as one. Yes, as Christians, we build our lives and we stake our eternity on the truth of God's word. So again, who or what is your spiritual foundation built upon? You see, your obedience an application of God's word 
are very crucial to building a solid foundation of faith as believers of Christ when the storm of life come your way. You have to know that you are grounded in biblical truth and will remain steadfast, steady as a rock in your moral beliefs. Plus, you will remain strong inwardly by trusting in God sovereignly. Yes, the God that we serve. He's not a pushover. No, he is the anchor of our soul. God is good, and he's worthy to be praised. Here in the book of James, chapter 1 and verse 22, word of God says, but be ye doers of the word, and not hearers only, deceiving your own self. In other words, once we hear the word of God, put the word of God to work in your life. Not just hear the word, but be doers of the word of God. How big is God in you? You'll never know. Unless you stretch out in faith. Unless you stand on the promises of God. In the book of Galatians, around the sixth chapter, it says, don't be weary in well-doing. Because in due season, if you think not, you shall receive the promises. Yes, God's promises are sure. In him is the end, and in him is amen. God is not like man. Man sometimes is up and sometimes down. But God is the same every day of the week. He promised never to leave us, nor forsake us. Brothers and sisters, all those that are listening, in order to build a strong spiritual foundation, you have to build it on things not of this world and ultimately on our God in Christ. You have to come out of the society you live in and set your sight, your mind and heart on the things of God. Because we know that every good and perfect gift comes from God. He is the one that has everything in control. It may seem at the end of the hour that every foundation is being Shaken from the White House all the way to your house and mine. And the truth be told, even in the church house. But our faith and trust has to be in God. We know that He is the one that is able to keep us in perfect peace with everything around us. Is falling apart. Here the psalmist David says in Psalms 18, verse 2, the Lord is my rock and my fortress and my deliverer. You see, as believers of Christ, we should build our spiritual foundation on a rock, and that rock is. God Almighty, Jesus Christ, the Word that became flesh. You see, again, Jesus said in the book of Matthew, chapter 7, verses 24 through 27. Here Jesus said, Therefore, whosoever hear these sayings of mine, and do it them. I will liken him unto a wise man, 
which built his house upon a rock in the right descendant. And the flood came, and the wind blew and beat upon that house, and it fell not, for it was found upon a rock, a solid rock. And everyone that hears these sayings of mine and doeth them not shall be likened unto a foolish man which built his house upon the sand. And the wind and the rain descended, and the flood came, and the wind blew and beat upon that house, and it fell, and great was the fall of it. Who or what is your foundation, your spiritual foundation, built upon. If we as believers of Christ do not build our foundation on God and his word, then we will crumble and fall in every difficult circumstances or situation. In every trial, we will not seek out to God but we will, we will be looking onto the world for the answer. See, the word of God says in 2 Corinthians 6, verses 17 through 18, Wherefore, come out from among them, and be ye separate, says the Lord, and touch not the unclean thing, and I will receive you and to myself and will be a father unto you. And you shall be my sons and daughters, says the Lord Almighty. You see, God wants us to be real and true with him. So the Bible says in Isaiah 1 and 18, come, let us reason together, says the Lord. Even though your sins may be as scarlet, I'll make them as white as snow. They may be red as crimson, but I'll make them as wool. God is looking for realness, realness in his people. Those that will stand, those that will believe God, believe his word, those that will stand on the promises of God, regardless of how long, it may take. Sure, the winds may blow. The water may rise. But if your faith and your soul is anchored in God, then God is just a matter of time before he'll intervene and bring you out. You'll be as pure gold. He'll bring you out to where you're living the abundant life to where you can be a blessing. He'll make you a blessing to become a blessing to someone else. That's the type of God that we serve. You see, God has a plan for you and me. He wants to mold us and he wants to form us into his own. However, we must display the man and attitude of Christ for God to do so so that he can work within us, through us. We must build our foundation on the word, Jesus Christ, the word that became flesh, because that foundation has been tested and it will never fall. As believers of Christ, we must give our time to God and not to this present evil world, age that we are living in. Then will we become citizens of God 
and not of, not of this world. You see, the lust of the flesh, the lust of the eyes, and the pride of life, which is intimate against God, we have to make a choice as born-again believers in Christ. Once we give our life to Christ, we have to be determined and committed that the world is behind us and the cross is before us. We've been bought with a price. We're not our own anymore. We belong to God. You see, we are the, we are the, the potter. Excuse me, we are the clay. He is the potter. Let him mold you. Let him make you. Let him break you. Let him stretch you so that you can become that vessel set apart for the master's use. So that you can become that mouthpiece that hand and feet, that he can work in and through from this day forward. Yes, who or what is your spiritual foundation built upon? In the book of Ephesians, chapter 2, verse 19 and 20, the word says, Now therefore, ye are no, lo- no more strangers, and foreigners, but fellow citizens with the saints and of the household of God and are built upon the foundation of the apostles and prophets, Jesus Christ himself being the chief stone. Yes, God is good. And he's worthy to be praised. You see, God knows when you are turning from evil and striving to build a relationship on him. That is why. That is when that is when you allow yourself to truly be his child. You see, God will do his part if you commit your time and effort to him and build a strong foundation on him. In 2 Timothy 2, verse 19, we read it earlier, but it's bare to be said again. Nevertheless, the foundation of God, stand it sure. Having this seal, the Lord knoweth them that are here. And let everyone that name in the name of Christ depart from iniquity. We are to encourage one another as brothers and sisters in Christ in order to build a strong, a removable, unre- unmovable spiritual foundation that is built upon that rock. And that and the rock will make you a member of his, of his eternal household. Yes, we can become a member of the body of Christ. Christ is being the chief cornerstone. Christ is being the ultimate finisher of our faith. Yes, the question still remains today in 2019. Who or what is your spiritual foundation built upon? The God that we say, he knows that. Oh, yes, he does. Here, again, to be reminded, who or what is your spiritual foundation built upon? In the book of Psalms, 139, verses 23 and 24, it says, Search me, O God, and know my heart. Try me. 
and know my thoughts and see if there be any wicked way in me and lead me in the way everlasting. Anyone, another key area for building a strong, solid foundation on a spiritual basis. Another key area that we must stay focused on is to have godly friendship with our family and godly friendship, relationships, which are very vital and it should be cherished. The people in our lives and in, in, your, in your life and your relationship with them very important are very important to God, and they need to be valuable to you and to sustain you see God desires that you love other people the way he loves people that's why we got to look beyond we got to look at them. Through the eyes of God, look beyond their needs, beyond beyond their problems, and see their needs, and seek to build people up, and not to tear people down. Always keep this in mind. According to First Corinthians fifteen, verse thirty-three and thirty-four. Be not deceived. Evil, bad company, corrupt, good good character. So awake to righteousness and sin not. For some have not the knowledge of God. I speak this to you. Be careful about who you are. Spending time with. Yes, it's it's your place and it's your commitment to God to follow his instruction in the word of God. You see, the Bible is biblical instruction given to us before leaving earth. Another key area that you as a child of God, you must consider is how do you handle your finances that God has blessed you with? You see, being a good steward over your finances is a spiritual discipline that blesses God, others, and yourself. Living outside of your means amasses material possession, possession accumulating, Irresponsible debt are very unwise. When you manage your finances very wisely, as a good steward of what God has blessed you with, you eliminate needless stress and anxiety. But the Bible says to us, be anxious for nothing. But in everything, with prayers and supplication, with thanksgiving, making your request known unto God, and the peace of God that passes all of this thing shall keep your hearts and minds through Christ Jesus. Yes, God is good, and he's worthy to be praised. So who or what is your spiritual foundation? Built upon. In the book of Mark, chapter 8, verse 36, it says, For what shall it profit a man if he shall gain the whole world and lose his own soul? What shall it profit a man or woman? If they shall gain the whole world 
and lose their own soul. So it's very important for us to put priority where it belongs, for us to understand there's a choice that we must make where our treasure is and where our heart is. If our treasure is on earth, then our heart is dealing with things on earth. If our heart is on heavenly things, then our if our heart is on heavenly things, that's where our mind should be also. So we don't need to we don't need to make a choice. Excuse me, we need to make a choice which is more important. When the Bible let us know it's important to man once to die and then the judgment. Have you ever seen a U-Haul uh, hooked on to a hearse on the way to the graveyard? So we came in here with nothing. And guess what? We'll leave without nothing. The things that we accumulate here on earth it will be left to somebody, whether family, children, friends, or to the state. Somebody will get what you have accumulated here on earth. So if I was you, I would consider what it's saying, what it's saying, and make a choice that will benefit me for the future. Because this world is crumbling. It's falling apart on a daily basis. But there is a place that God is preparing for us. The Bible says in the book of John 14, verse 1, 2, and 3, let not your heart be troubled. You believe in God? Believe also in me. In my Father's house. Of many mentions. If it was not so, I would have told you. I go to prepare a place for you. And if I go to prepare a place for you, I'll come again and receive you unto myself. That where I am, you may be also. That's a promise that God has given. Jesus also gave us a promise. And he's coming back for a church without spot, limits, or wrinkle. Yes, it's something that we must think about. We must ponder. And we'll make a, a choice on our own. God wants the best for us. But the question is, which is more important to you? This day. So, who or what is your spiritual foundation built upon? Another thing that we must consider is the fact as a born again believer, your body is God living holy temple because his spirit resides. He lived within you. Once you came to Christ and had that born again experience, once you confessed that Jesus Christ was Lord, and you believe in your heart with the confession that God raised him from the dead, and with your heart you believe on the righteousness, and with your mouth confession was made unto salvation. So we as believers in Christ, we have a, a duty to do on our part. And that is to keep your body healthy. It is a spiritual discipline that is part of life. You see, God called you to live, but to live a healthy lifestyle. Also permits you to carry out God's ready plan in your life. You know, the Bible says that God has good thoughts towards us. And we have to do our part 
in order to keep our temple clean, in order to in order to remain here, to do God's will. Bible says in First Corinthians six, verse nineteen and twenty. It says, but know ye not that your body is the temple of the Holy Ghost, which is in you, which you have of God, and you are not your own, for ye are bought with a price. Nevertheless, glorify God in your body and in your spirit, which are God, who are what? Is your spiritual foundation built upon? It is very important, brothers and sisters of Christ. It is very important for us to fellowship with other believers. That you, that's why we are planted in a local church where we can worship, where we can worship God. We can hear his word and apply it to our lives, plus fellowship with other members of the body of Christ. There you will grow and mature spiritually, as well as being able to put to use the spiritual gifts God has blessed you with. That's why the word of God says, for us not to forsake they are similar to ourselves together because it is a time of exhortation and encouragement, a time to get instruction for each, for this week's journey. Yes, we serve an awesome God. We serve a good God. But Bible also commands us and instructs us. According to 1 Corinthians 14, verse 12, even so, Ye for as much as ye are zealous of spiritual gifts, seek that you may excel to the edifying of the church. When you rise, when you wisely invest yourself in the things of God in various ways, you will become more spiritually, financially, physically, emotionally, and socially. Because your life will be well fit and well spent in order to live a life of influence for Christ's sake. Yes, God having blessed us just to sit, sit on our most holy and die. He has blessed us <laughs> that we become a blessing to someone else. We are as good stewards here, taking on the form of a servant to serve people as God sees fit, just to extend ourselves and the talent that he has blessed us with so that we can build up, so that we can support the work of God here on planet Earth. According to Ephesians chapter 2, verse 19 through 22, it says, Now therefore, ye are no more strangers and foreigners, but fellow citizens with the saints and of the household of God, and are built upon the foundation of the apostles and prophets, Jesus Christ himself being the chief cornerstone in whom all the building fitly framed being joined together growing unto a holy temple in the Lord in whom ye are being built together for a dwelling place of God through the Spirit. Again, God's word reveals our foundation. Spiritually speaking, the foundation is the basis 
of Christian doctrine and experience. And the two are never separated. Yes, the foundation is the basis of Christian of Christian doctrine and experience, which all future develop, development depends. Also, we will discover that the storms of life will reveal the true quality of one's character. Have you ever heard this saying that the proof is in the pudding. God's word reinforce our spiritual foundation. Again, brothers and sisters in Christ, all those that are listening here, who or what is your spiritual foundation built upon? It should be Christ Jesus, the author and finish it of our faith. Let's go to the Lord in prayer. Precious Father, we are so grateful and thankful for the word today. We thank you that the word of God we believe have fell on good ground. We'll bring back 1,600 full blessings to the people's lives. May the anointing rest upon the word and draw people to you. Let them come, come forth, Father God, of knowing that, that, hallelujah, that they are unsaved, that they are ready to give their life to Christ. Thank you for saving souls. Thank you for making them whole. Thank you, Father God, for extending grace and mercy. Thank you, Father God, for the Holy Spirit of God. Just speak the word of those that have listened in and just reinforce us and let us move forward in the things of God. Let us make ready because we know that one day Jesus Christ is coming back for a church without spot, blemish, or wrinkle. And, Father God, we just dedicate how to consecrate ourselves totally and complete into thy hands. You move the way that you see fit and forevermore. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. 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 Well, bless God. We just thank God for, for this opportunity. Hallelujah. For bringing forth the word. If there's if there's ways that hallelujah, you would like to be a blessing to us, amen. Send the seed offering, amen. Hallelujah. This is a way that you can reach us. Praise the Lord. Uh, just send it to Apostle W. Tebow and Prophet Lisa Tebow to be home. Box 92864, Lafayette, Louisiana, 70509. Again, the the way you can uh, 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 reach us is to send send it to <laughs> W. Tebow or Lisa Tebow, P.O. Box 92864, Lafayette, Louisiana, 70509. Well, let's go and have a blessed weekend, a blessed night. We just hope and pray that something that we say that will bless you, uh, hallelujah, that will bless you. Consider what we'll, what was said, and and just follow God. Have a blessed weekend, a warm and dry one. Amen. We want you to know that we love you, and we love you, and God loves you. Keep us up in prayer that the Lord continuously use us to be His mouthpiece, His hands and feet, to uh, lift up the name of Jesus throughout the land, teaching and preaching locally. But we are reaching globally. God bless you is our prayer. Good night.